Welcome to this tutorial on making a leaderboard in Excel. First off, I have to give a shout out to my student, Christopher. It was his idea in the Dunder Mifflin project. In my class, you always have to do some extra enhancement to every project. And here's the Dunder Mifflin project. And for him, he made this leaderboard. So anytime the cells change, I can see the top three reps. So for example, let's say Phyllis, who's not on the leaderboard right now, let's say she actually had February and she had $90,000 in sales. You can see it changed. She's now the top rep and these were her totals. And so he did a fantastic job. I've never seen this done in a Dunder Mifflin project submitted by any of my students. So that's why I'm making this video. I'm going to show you how he did this. So the first thing I did is I made a copy of his, his worksheet. So let's take this step by step because he actually wrote three formulas. So let's look at the first thing. Let's just get a total. Let's see the top three totals. So first, whenever you're writing a formula, you're going to first click in the cell where you want your answer. You type equals. Now, in order to see the largest number in the cell, we're going to type uh, large, open parenthesis. Now it wants to know, okay, so you're, I'm going to find the largest number for you. What data am I looking at? Well, we're going to look at this range, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight it. I'm going to make this an absolute reference. You can also do F4 and it'll make an absolute reference for you. Comma, and now it wants to know that K, it wants to know, well, which one do you want? The first largest, the second largest, the third? And right now we want the first. Okay, so what Excel did is it went and looked at this data and it said the largest number is this. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna drag it down because I want the top three. And the second one, again, is pulling the first largest. I want the second largest. And in this one, I want the third largest. I did not change that. Let's try that again. The third largest. Okay, so these are my top three. Now, to get the name associated with that person, that's not quite as easy. He actually had to do several steps to find out the name. So let's actually break it up. So he did two formulas. So let's start with the first formula and then we're gonna add on the second formula. The first thing he did was a match. So equal match. Okay, one second. Equal match. Open parenthesis. It wants to know what is it looking up? Well, I want it to look up this value. Let's also put absolute reference around that. It wants to know the array, the array, like where is this information? Where am I looking for that 133,000? And it's looking for it here, so I'm gonna highlight that. Again, I want absolute reference around that because whenever I drag it down, I always want that value to stay. I don't want it to change. Now that I'm thinking about it, this should not have an absolute reference, so let's go ahead and remove that because I do want this to change. It's not always gonna be looking at G11, I'll be looking at G12 and also G13, but this will always stay. Okay, I'm done with that. And now it's, I have one more option. It says the match type and it's even prompting me. I can put a one, a zero or a negative one. Do I want this match to be kind of the same? Does it have to be exactly the same or somehow greater than? And I want an exact match. So I'm gonna put zero. All right, so it returns a value of four. It says, okay, I'm looking at this value and it's in the fourth row. And that is true. This is the fourth row of that table. I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag this down. Now, if you remember in that original time when I was writing that match and I had put absolute reference around this and I had to go back and take it out, it's because I didn't want it. When I did that, uh, the fill, I wanted to automatically increment for me. So that's why I had to remove the absolute reference. Okay, I'm gonna move on to another cell but eventually I'm gonna put it all together. So right now I need to know, well, in the fourth row, who is in that fourth row? And I want it to return Karen. 
And so he did this by writing an index formula. And so it wants to know the array. Where am I pulling this information? I want it pulled from here. It wants to know the row num. I want it to look up this information right here. And let's close it. And now it pulls Karen. Let's see. This should have an absolute reference because I do not want this to change. And then let's drag it down. And this is correct. Karen's in first place, Stanley's in second, Pam's in third. So this is our leaderboard. But really, he did not have this column right here. He put it all in one. So let's do that and make it look even better. So what he did is he made this two formulas. He said, okay, this is going to be index, and I want it to look here. Use absolute reference, comma. It says, okay, what row am I looking at? And it's actually looking at this row, and it's just doing the match. And let's see if he closed it. We don't need that anymore. And there it is. So let's break it down one more time. Just to get the highest number, Christopher wrote a large formula. Again, here it is large. We gave it the range. And this one, he wanted the highest. And the second one, same range. This time he wanted the second highest. And here, same range. And then he wanted the third highest. In order to get the name, he had to do two things. He had to write first a match formula. So here's the match. Started with match. It wanted to know the array. And so he, well, I'm sorry, it wanted to know the lookup value. It told me right here. We're looking at this value. It wanted to know where it was going to look up the information, and it's looking up here. And we said we want an exact match. Once he got this formula working, he then wrote an index around it. So here's the index. It says, okay, well, what information am I looking up? And he's looking up the first name. He wants to know, well, what's the row number? And he was able to pull the row number by having that match. Again, complicated in my opinion, but he did a fantastic job. So if you have any questions, please email me at learn at vegetarianhomeschooler.com.